Raw editing can be a little intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. In this video, I'm going to teach you a simple process that you can use to edit your raw images to make them look the best that they absolutely can. And if you're new to photo editing, don't worry. I'm gonna keep it really simple so you can follow along. Most cameras today allow us to photograph in a lossless format known as RAW. This format allows us to keep a lot of the data so we can get the best image possible when we start to edit it in our post-processing software. Think of this as the digital film that needs to be processed back when cameras used to operate off of film. The most common file format though that you're likely familiar with is JPEG and that is the one your camera may be set to right now. I'm going to encourage you to take your camera off of JPEG or at a minimum shoot RAW plus JPEG if it allows so you can get these rich detailed images in the end. The problem with JPEGs is that it throws away so much of the data and information that we need in the editing process to really get the most out of what our cameras can do. Let's ditch JPEG for a little while and start working in RAW when we capture images with our camera. Today, I'm going to be using On One Photo RAW for the tutorial, but you can use other programs to complete everything that I'm going to showcase because most of the tools inside of On One exist in every other photo editing software. If you want to pick up a copy of On One, however, and save some money, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. Now, let's get started with editing a photo. So here we are inside of On One Photo Raw editing module. I am making some assumptions here that you know how to import your images and organize them. But if you don't, then comment down below and I will make a video that will help with that aspect. Today, we're just going to look at editing an image as best as we possibly can. Now, to get you familiar with the workspace, I'll just show you what is available here in On One. But again, I'm only going to highlight things that are available in multiple editing software. So this isn't something that you have to go and get On One if you choose to use a different program. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna hide is this Brilliance AI because only on one has that. But inside of tone and color, when you work with a raw image, you're going to get access to what's known as camera profile. Now, this will be different in er other programs. Some of them call it a color profile and uh, things of that sort. But when you hit this drop down, you'll see that I have a wide range of selections here that I can choose from most of the programs will have their very own options of camera profiles that they would recommend. But then you also have the profiles that are baked into your camera itself in two different methods. So you have the standard profiles, landscape, neutral, portrait, standard, vivid. But then you also have some of the color creative profiles, and this is gonna be different based off of what camera you are using. This is a image that I took on my Sony A7R4. So I have the clear, deep, landscape, light, monochrome, neutral, portrait, standard, and vivid. And then in some editing software, you'll have this final option, which is linear raw. Now, this is a great camera profile for anyone who may have overexposed their image, but it does take a lot more work to get a final product, at least in my experience. Now, for today, I'm just going to leave it on the on one standard because that is my favorite camera profile whenever I work inside of this software. So the next section that you have is the tone section. This is where you can adjust and dial in the exposure, which is the brightness of your image in relationship to the darkest part to the brightest part. Leaving the exposure slider alone for a second, we can jump down to the areas that really make up what that exposure looks like and this is gonna be your highlights, your midtones, shadows, whites, and blacks. 
these are the areas that really do impact your image. If I am to pull up on the shadows, which many people like to do, you'll see that the photo becomes overall brighter. If I am to pull up on the midtones, which not every program has a midtone slider, but if I pull up on the midtones, you'll see that this is also brightening the image, but it's only brightening the image in the areas that are in the center here. If you take a look at our histogram and you pay attention to the center peak here, as I move this to the right, you can see that that center peak, it starts to move all of the data to the right. Whereas when I move my shadows, it's moving primarily the darker information in the overall image. And then of course with the highlights, it's going to separate the tonal range of the brightest areas in the image. So if I pull this up, then you'll see the brightest areas of the image get brighter. If I pull it down, you'll see that only the brightest areas are being impacted. Now, if we reset this by double clicking, then everything is good. So what should you do when you are modifying your tone in an image? As subjective as it is, I will say that you should get as much tonal value here in your histogram. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to read the histogram. All I'm going to tell you to do, because most programs have the clipping mask, you can just click on the triangle and that should give you or activate your clipping. Now, for very simple purposes, I'm just going to crank up on the exposure and you see those red spots. That's where I am losing information in the image in the brightest areas. Now, if I pull this down to the left, those blue spots is where I'm losing information in the darkest areas of my image. What we want to do is push this histogram as far to the right as we possibly can without getting those clipping warnings. Now, you'll notice that I have some clipping that's happening here on her jewelry, and I'll deal with that in a different way later on. But Typically, what I would want to do is pull down on the highlights until that goes away. All right. So the overall image, let's go ahead and get a good exposure. I am going to pull up on my shadows because I like to work with the darkest areas first. And this is just a preference. You do not have to work this way. So I think that that looks good and I can always come back and modify this later. And then I'm going to work with my midtones because I feel like I still have some room where I can make this just a touch brighter, maybe to about there. And then I'll pull down on my highlights just to see if I can recover those red spots that are getting blown out there. And then I'll come back to my midtones and pull up on those to give me the overall brightness in the image. And maybe even open the shadows just a touch more till we get to somewhere around here. Okay, so this is what we started with. It was a darker image. And in fact, there's nothing wrong with this exposure if this is something that you wanted to go for. But I wanna go for a more bright image. So I decided to brighten everything up. Now, the problem whenever you brighten an image is you lose contrast and you can tell that I'm losing contrast because I have very little information over here in the darkest areas and I have very little information over here in the brightest areas of my image. The way that I resolve that is by modifying the white and the black point. So if I pull down on the black point, you can just see how that pulls the dynamic range now you don't have to pull too much and you know if you pull all the way then you're going to get a lot of black in your image and that's not going to look well uh, in most cases and it's also not going to print well so what i like to do is pull it back until the darker areas that i'm okay with losing detail in because 
uh, it's okay for me to lose some detail in dark areas, I think. Like, I don't need to see anything in her nose. There's not much that I really care to see back here or over here. So if I turn off these indicators for a little while, like, that looks fine to me. Now, what I don't want to do is lose detail in the highlights, especially on her skin, which we haven't had any of those issues so far, so all is well. Now, I can pull the whites to the right, and you can see that I'm developing this contrast. Now, what I'm very cautious of is I don't want to wash out her skin, right? I want to keep some color and some identity in there. So what I'm going to do is click on this recover highlight hue. Now this may be only in on one, but what it does is it really keeps the pure, the, the integrity of the whites in the image or the highest, the brightest colors in the image, brightest tones, I should say, I'm sorry. Uh, so the last thing that I'm going to do is probably just pull down on the exposure. I just did all that work to brighten the image. But notice I'm only going a very small amount, 0.15 uh, negative exposure. And maybe pull down on the highlights just a little bit more because I'm not a fan of what's happening to her forehead up here. And then what I'm going to do to make sure that I have decent contrast is I pull my contrast slider to the right just a little bit. And I think that this is an image that achieved the proper exposure. So this is what we started with. And this is what we have now. This was a darker starting point. Again, nothing wrong with this. Moody lighting is great if that's what you're going for. However, if you need to edit the image to get it a little bit brighter and more drastic, this is why we want to use raw images. So the next thing that you may need to work on in your image is the color. And the color is really broken down into three parts. You have your white balance or your temperature and your tint. And then you have saturation and vibrance. So these two things go together, temperature and tint, because that's going to adjust your white balance. So the thing about white balance is if I pull this slider to the left, you can see the image gets more blue or what we call more cool. And in some cases, this may be the look that you are going for and that you want. If I pull this slider to the right, you'll see that this image gets a little bit more orange and we call this warming up the image. And depending on what you're going for, you will have to establish the white balance that you want. Now there are some options that you can change here. And mind you, you only get these when you are working with a raw image. And this is one of the benefits to working with a raw image. You will be able to change your color or your white balance after you photograph it. So if you ever hear someone say, well, if you shoot raw, you can fix the white balance in post, that's what they're talking about, or this is what they're referring to. Now, this was shot with a uh, con constant light, and I'm not quite sure what the color temperature was, uh, and as shot seems to do the best for this particular image. But from a creative standpoint, if I say, you know, I think it's just a little too warm, even though I don't, I can just pull this to the left and cool it off a little bit. And now that matches with the blue tones that are behind the model and also throughout her dress. So it just becomes a more creative thing, working with color in that direction. But what you also have the option of working with is the saturation. Now this is the intensity of the colors in the image. Sometimes you do have to add a lot of saturation. It just depends on the lighting. Like this doesn't look too bad relative to where we were. However, my favorite slider when it comes to working with vib or with color is the vibrant slider. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up on the vibrant slider and you can see how that just brings richness into the overall image. So we went from something that looks like this, 
which again, is not bad to begin with. But now we have this, and this is such a beautiful, well exposed and edited image.